Why this is Chuck Grease. We are back at it. We're doing the King Project. Thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to talk with you guys in regards, regards to Dr. King and some of his great work and some of his legacy and uh, giving you a little my personal opinion and, and some of the things that went down or, or didn't, if you will. Uh, today, I really want to capture this quote here, and it goes like this. Human progress is neither automatic or inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering and struggle, the tireless exertions and passionate concerns of dedicated individuals. And definitely Dr. King was a dedicated individual when it comes to change and improvement and improvement for equality for others and service of others. I want to talk about a chance meeting that Dr. King had in Ghana uh, with then Vice President Nixon. Uh, he was invited by uh, Prime Minister Nokova, I believe. And uh, Dr. King uh, was already uh, had uh, Nixon in mind or in his sights. He wanted to meet with him. And this was a great opportunity that he took advantage of uh, in Ghana in 1957. To give you a perspective of kind of really where we are at right now, uh, that same year, Dr. King was named Time Magazine of the Year. Uh, four months before that, Dr. King was uh, coming off the Montgomery bus boycott uh, movement, and uh, he was in a situation where um, he was uh, really an uh, up-and-comer. He was really coming uh, into his own when it comes to some of the, the quality and some of the change that he was promoting, and it gave him, I believe, an opportunity to really, um, this chance meeting, to really push the, the agenda of some of the things that were going down or not going down in the South. Now, just to give you a perspective of, of why he wanted to meet uh, then Vice President Nixon, uh, he was a titan in himself when it comes to uh, legislative change and, and some of the different civil rights things that he was involved with that I think a lot of people are not familiar with. Uh, but to give you a background, uh, Nixon was considered a Quaker, which is someone who uh, was usually identified with not being um, a racist and not being someone who was promoting uh, discrimination and segregation. Um, he was someone that also uh, had administration uh, as, I think, governor back then that had some diversity within his, uh, his uh, governorship. Uh, he, believe, he served in the uh, National Guard, I believe, as well. And so I think, you know, some of those different things uh, really gave him a different um, uh, feel uh, opposed to other uh, politicians that Dr. King really viewed uh, at the time. Now, also, uh, Vice President Nixon was noted uh, and recognized for some of his work in the civil rights movement by Jet Magazine and, uh, and Ebony Magazine at the time, uh, and uh, integration and some of the different things that they were doing under the Eisenhower administration. So, you know, they were enforcing things. They were really opening things up, if you will, comparatively. And I think truly this uh, chance meeting um, that they had in Ghana was epic uh, as far as our U.S. history. It was a game changer. Um, with Nixon collaborating with strategies with Dr. King over the years, because I think after that meeting, uh, Dr. King went to Washington three months later, and then they began to have a respectable working relationship. And that relationship um, really, in my mind, gave uh, great insight to giving Nixon some credibility and being able to speak on some different things and be able to be knowledgeable about what was happening and some of the different things that uh, was not going on and some of the brutality and some of the dangerous uh, injustice that was happening uh, within our democracy. Now, if you think about the time uh, of this as well, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King also did benefit because he got some credibility because, uh, you know, the president, the vice president was sitting on a committee um, that uh, really gave them an opportunity to really start putting some teeth into some of the changes that happened in 64 and 65 later on when he was then the president. So Dr. King um, was not, again, the man that we know him of today as far as some of his accomplishments and awards and and some of the different things he was able to get accomplished. And uh, he definitely benefited because, because he was in a situation where there was a lot of uh, national media, a lot of press that uh, Dr. King got. Uh, he was in the room where some of these things were changing, some of these things were signed. And Dr. King, again, was able to separate himself from the pack when it comes to being able to have that influence for change uh, for these marches and these protests and all these sit-ins. Uh, you know, Dr. King was very adamant about how things weren't changing fast enough in the South and how that brutality was really um, a threat to our democracy and a lot, of, a lot of issues that was going on with there. So I believe that, you know, if they didn't hit it off or if they're in a situation where uh, uh, then Vice President Nixon was someone who, you know, really chose another person to work with or, or didn't even respect him, um, I think a lot of our change, a lot of the influence that Dr. King would uh, has had wouldn't have happened. Uh, you know, based off the start of this kind of relationship politically that uh, Dr. King established. Now, if you think about the situation that Dr. King was in, there was James Baldwin, there was James Bevel, W.E.D. Du Bois. There were other players that definitely could have stepped in 
and really did their thing in their own way, in their own light, in their own vision, and we could have a totally different history. Not to say that we wouldn't be sitting here today, but you know, when you, when you change the game up, uh, you change the players up, you might have a different result. Now, because of this relationship, because of that work relationship, uh, then Vice President Mr. Nixon was able to really push some things and really establish some things uh, in the 50s uh, to really have an effect on the 60s of the voters' rights and the civil rights issues of 64 and 65. So, you know, I just really wanted to pick this little discussion out today and really talk about how important uh, Richard Nixon was to the civil rights movement and really how important it was for Dr. King to really take advantage of opportunity and really seek out Nixon in a lot of ways uh, when it comes to the change. Now, obviously, the relationship uh, between Dr. King and, and Richard Nixon uh, soured uh, as he was the president. Um, I think there was an election in the 1960s that he was running for, and um, uh, Dr. King was arrested. Um, it was a, some serious charges. They had trumped a lot of different things up. And for some one reason or another, uh, Nixon didn't get involved. He didn't really stay true to some of his record of really being involved with things like that and really taking advantage of that. Uh, and, and, and being, you know, really politically savvy with being able to take Dr. King out of that situation. However, Kennedy did, and Kennedy, you know, did get the view of uh, the, 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 black, the black vote and, and really got the prominence, the influence that uh, uh, for stepping up. And, and, and he used that against Nixon. And I believe, you know, it was a part of the reason why he lost. You know, the crazy thing about it was Nixon was still able to get 30 percent, 32 percent of the black vote. Uh, but if he would have probably stepped up uh, and really got involved with that point in time towards the end, I really believe that we would have had a different history when it comes to uh, President Nixon being the president and beating Kenny out uh, earlier uh, in, 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 in our political process. Now, just to jump back real quick, Vice President Nixon was a key player for this reason uh, when it comes to the 64 and 65 Voting Rights Act. There was, a, there was, there was some legislation that was put in play, um, and there was a lot of uh, things against it, and, and, and Nixon was able to really work some things into the, into the Legislative Act to be able to have the change that we had. Uh, so then the 64 and 65 uh, changes that we had for our history that we do know about the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, uh, had the teeth that we needed to have to really have things enforced, like the Little Rock incident that went down in uh, Arkansas and how the troops went down there and really got, uh, you know, the Brown versus Education movement uh, going and, and really desegregating the really the Deep South and really desegregating a lot of the issues that was going on and really getting the equality and the justice in some of those places that really desperately need it. And I just think this chance meeting with Dr. King and and the chance meeting that they were in the same place at the same time and how they hit it off and how uh, Richard Nixon, Vice President then Nixon, really respected him and really respected what King was doing and how King, again, uh, was able to follow up and really give the great opportunity of himself and get on the national playing field. You know, he was involved with a lot of the meetings, a lot of different things. You know, as, as a president later on in years, Nixon, you know, had a uh, appointee, I think a special White House assistant named James Brown, uh, who was able to get like over $100 million for black colleges. You know, so he was doing some things, you know, like I said, in a way that I don't think he gets a lot of credit for when it comes to the civil rights movement. And I just thought I'd share that with you. And I also thought I'd share with you how, you know, how things could have been totally different um, if it wasn't from this chance meeting that happened to go down in Ghana in 1975. Uh, excuse me, 1957, excuse me. So, you know, I just really wanted to share a little tidbits with you. Chuck Greasby, G Union Worldwide. I really hope you enjoyed a little bit of this information. We got a lot more coming for you for the rest of the month of October. And I really appreciate you guys' support on the G Union Worldwide project. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.